the BRICS Plus Alliance may challenge the dominance of current institutions and offer the Global South a stronger role in international affairs when more major developing countries join. The 10 BRICS Plus countries, which include important energy producers and importers, make about half of the world's population and two-fifths of its commerce. An additional 12 countries have submitted applications. The bloc is beginning to establish institutions that will have a significant impact on supply chains, international banking, energy commerce, and technical research. Global businesses must enhance their ability to seize the possibilities and reduce the dangers associated with BRICS expansion by incorporating geopolitics into their investment plans. With the focus on conflicts in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, as well as growing hostilities among the major powers of the world, a fundamental change in the world order has been steadily advancing. Big developing countries are starting to create alternatives to organizations dominated by the West and are starting to have a bigger say in global economic matters. The official international organization known as the BRICS Plus is at the center of this movement. The grouping consists of five founding members, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and five invited members, Egypt, Ethiopia, Aran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates that joined in January 2024. These 10 countries collectively produce and export 40% of the world's crude oil. They also make up over half of the world's population, 25% of the global GDP, and 25% of the worldwide goods trade. 12 more countries have shown interest in joining, including Bangladesh, Vietnam, Thailand, and other thriving emerging markets. Would increase the group's percentage of the world GDP to one-third. Emerging markets have the chance to unite around global issues and new business prospects thanks to the expanding BRICS+. Plus. A more expansive BRICS contest, the hegemony of established international organizations, heavily impacted by the West, such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. Additionally, it lessens the significance of the G20, an organization established in 1999 to promote economic policy convergence among the biggest developed and developing nations. The G20 is in fact eroding on both ends. Its six sizable developing nations are making their own voices heard in BRICS+, Plus, while its seven most economically developed members are fortifying their bonds through the G7. First exhibit, BRICS Plus establishes a platform that provides, at minimum, developing markets the chance to come together on world issues and discover fresh ways to support each other's economic growth, and it is changing gradually. Its establishment of monetary policy, global supply chains, international finance, political and financial institutions, and technology research might have significant effects on future energy commerce, international finance, and technology research. Global businesses will thus need to adjust their investment strategy to take these new geopolitical and economic realities into account. They should also improve their ability to seize chances and reduce the danger they provide. How the BRICS Plus have changed At their inaugural meeting in 2009, the leaders of the founding BRICS countries discussed revamping international financial institutions, which they felt did not sufficiently address the Global South's interests. Apart from the G20 and UN, which comprise all five BRICS, emerging economies lacked a significant platform to deliberate on their own geopolitical and economic objectives. There were sometimes difficult conditions connected to development aid and infrastructure finance provided by financial organizations that were primarily founded by Western nations following World War II. From the start, there has been doubt over whether BRICS will develop into a viable group. However, these countries' economies have been getting closer to one another over time. Greater intra-BRICS trade intensity has resulted from trade in products between BRICS economies having significantly surpassed trade between BRICS and G7 countries. Showcase 2. Many of these economies have also gained significantly more weight as a result of decades of fast expansion in the worldwide market, acting as both manufacturers and buyers. See Exhibit 3. These countries can form another alliance that is less reliant on the West because many of them are involved with both China, which is viewed as an economic and trade giant, and advanced economies. Before we continue, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and like button if you haven't done so yet. Don't forget to tell us what you think in the comment section. Let's get going. The BRICS growth has gained speed due to recent crises. Several large developing countries who support neither Russia nor NATO rejected pressure to follow the sanctions that the West put on Moscow in reaction to the invasion of Ukraine. Others have expressed dissatisfaction at the G7 countries' actions to address the COVID-19 epidemic and climate change failing to consider their needs. The institutions of the BRICS Plus have been gradually developing through regular gatherings, cooperative projects, and official bodies. However, there are reasons to doubt BRICS Plus potential to become and there are still functional institutions. This category encompasses nations with widely disparate political structures, institutional structures, economic frameworks, and cultural heritages. It even involves hostile geopolitical powers. For instance, ties between China and India and Saudi Arabia and Iran are still tense. Tensions over trade within the group may also increase in the event of a so-called China shock of low-cost exports of everything from chemicals to equipment to steel. Furthermore, the expansion is strongly skewed toward the Middle East suggesting that if the group expands, greater regional balance may be needed. 
A more powerful BRICS Plus may have a big influence on commerce, infrastructure, energy, technology, monetary policy, and trade networks worldwide. 5 Ways BRICS Plus Could Change Global Governance BRICS Plus may have a big influence on the world in the following five regions. Vitality BRICS Plus unites some of the largest energy producers and consumers worldwide. The BRICS Plus member nations, which now include Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, produce around 32% of the world's natural gas and 43% of its crude oil. The share prices of Kazakhstan, Kuwait, and Bahrain will increase if they are accepted. 38% of the world's petroleum imports come from the BRICS Plus countries, with China and India leading the way. That would increase to 55% if all new candidates were accepted. See Exhibit 4. Having a large number of the largest energy buyers and sellers in one group might lead to the emergence of a parallel energy trading system during periods of market turbulence. This would enable trade between the BRICS Plus nations outside of the banking system dominated by the West system and any sanctions plans in the future, and it may even provide them the power to affect oil prices. Networks of Trade one of the main forces behind BRICS Plus economic growth has been trade. Between 2002 and 2022, the present members of the group's share of world commerce in products more than quadrupled to 40%. Examining the growing reliance of individual BRICS Plus economies on trade with other BRICS Plus members helps to illustrate this trend. Integration has been significantly aided by China's expanding position as an importer of commodities and provider of consumer and industrial goods. For example, China is now a significant market for Brazilian iron ore and soybeans and a significant exporter of high-tech products like solar panels and electric cars, panels as well as large machines. Furthermore, Russian exports to BRICS Plus markets, China and India in particular, have shifted as a result of Western sanctions related to the conflict in Ukraine. While certain BRICS Plus countries have free trade agreements, FTAs with one another through blocks like the Pan-Arab Free Trade Area and the Gulf Cooperation Council, the 10 Asian organization as a whole does not presently have any FTAs. Midway through the discussion, India pulled out of the China-led Asia-Pacific Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. However, there are a number of ways in which BRICS Plus might act as a platform for expanding intra-BRICS Plus market access. For instance, it already organized a working group on the digital economy and has set up a structure to encourage collaboration in the trade of business and professional services. Finance for Development and Infrastructure The biggest advancement to date project and development financing has been a key component of BRICS Plus institution creation. With a $100 billion capitalization, the new development bank, NDB, mainly supports China's Belt and Road Plan. In addition to being loan recipients from the China-led Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank, AIIB, Egypt, India, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates are owners in the bank. Together, the NBD and AIIB have pledged more than $71 billion in financing by 2023, covering a variety of industries like clean energy, public health, and infrastructure. See Exhibit No. 5. These kinds of initiatives bring in a lot of money for BRICS Plus businesses. Furthermore, the inclusion of Saudi Arabia and other wealthy nations might increase and diversify BRICS Plus financial resources. Financial Strategy The BRICS Plus nations are eager to become more independent of the global monetary system, which is dominated by the West. About 90% of dollars are used for all international currency transactions, which mostly go via US and European banks. The financial sanctions imposed by the West on Russia highlighted the US pivotal position in the global financial system and its continued systemic influence through the Bretton Woods institutions. However, because BRICS Plus include major commodities importers and exporters, the organization may end up acting as a middleman for foreign currency deals involving currencies other than US dollars. For example, the NDB has made around one-fifth of its loans available in Chinese yuan. Digital currency promotion is also a goal shared by China, Russia, and the other BRICS Plus countries. The organization has released a beta version of BRICSPA, an app that allows users to make payments in a number of currencies other than US dollars. That may lessen countries' dependency on the US and reduce their vulnerability to currency fluctuations and sanctions during economic downturns. In order to help countries deal with financial crises, BRICS Plus developed the Payment Task Force, the Think Tank Network for Finance, and the Contingent Reserve Arrangement. These initiatives create a pool of reserves that may be utilized in lieu of INFF funding. Technological Collaboration A neglected aspect of BRICS plus cooperation is space. With the backing of established alliances between China and Brazil as well as between Russia and China, there is a BRICS plus joint committee for space cooperation. A center for industrial competencies and a partnership on new industrial revolution have also been formed by BRICS plus. These programs are designed to promote collaboration and innovation in cutting-edge fields including renewable energy, intelligent manufacturing, artificial intelligence, and digitalization. The work may be more beneficial. Emerging markets are better able to generate intellectual property, embrace alternative technical standards, and gain a head start on new technology.
Businesses should think about how to respond to the infrastructure boom, China plus one, the BRICS plus market strategy, risk and compliance, and geopolitics. The effects on businesses, there are commercial potential and hazards associated with a larger BRICS. Businesses should start preparing for the possibility that the BRICS Plus will create additional official organizations and agreements in the future. Businesses should think about taking action in five areas. Formulate a BRICS for BRICS approach to the market. Over the course of the next 10 years, the BRICS Plus markets are probably going to rise significantly. There are now significant and expanding intra-BRICS trade exchanges despite the group's absence of official trade and investment agreements. BRICS Plus markets may prove to be advantageous entry points for businesses looking forward to penetrate further emerging markets. One excellent illustration of how businesses may tailor their offers to appeal to customers throughout the member nations is the popularity of China-made electric vehicles in the BRICS Plus markets. Make use of the rise in infrastructure. There will probably be a large infrastructure investment in BRICS Plus, which will enhance connectivity and the economic climate. Projects in the fields of energy, Digital communications, transportation, and other fields will create possibilities for investors and create demand for multinational corporations. For instance, the Indian subcontinent's transportation infrastructure is being funded by 15 projects funded by the NDB. Embrace China Plus One A lot of businesses are using supply chain strategies that aim to achieve a challenging equilibrium. They wish to continue taking advantage of China's numerous manufacturing competitive advantages. However, they also have to reduce risks, respond to changes in the relative cost, and become eligible for government subsidies for near or reshoring. Businesses should think about creating supply chains that take advantage of the BRICS plus economies in a world where there are more powers. They may become more robust to trade and geopolitical shocks as a result. Improve compliance and risk. Companies are facing more legal, operational, and reputational risks as a result of technology competition between the US and China and economic restrictions, like those resulting from the conflict in Ukraine. Geopolitical risk is now ranked as one of the top five concerns in a new BCG poll of 250 risk and compliance officers, up 15 places from the previous survey. The majority of the sanctions have come from Western nations. The BRICS nations may decide to coordinate a joint non-sanctioning stance in the future in an effort to eschew the financial system controlled by the West. Global corporations need to take this into consideration. Situation while handling their international supply chains for import and export, currency rates, third-party screening, risk, and compliance requirements. Businesses must abide by Western sanctions, but they may do so in a way that does not interfere with prospective value chains that might link the BRICS. Develop your global power. In the post-Cold War era of comparatively calm conditions, corporate executives had little incentive to make a strong statement on international political and security matters. Geopolitics is becoming more unpredictable and dangerous these days. Executives must be ready for a variety of contingencies that may affect their supply chains, customers, brands, and operations. Their strategic planning and capital allocation decisions need to take geopolitics into account. Additionally, executives should develop geopolitical sensing capacities across their departments, divisions, and regional managements to strike a balance between risk reduction and commercial efficiency. New geopolitical tensions, trade disputes, economic ambition and volatility, and a pandemic in recent years have undoubtedly brought long-lasting structural change and challenges to the corporate world we were accustomed to. The emergence of the BRICS Plus indicates that emerging economies are now prepared for a more significant role in the global order, one that more closely aligns with their interests, following decades of robust economic expansion. Businesses that adjust to this trend will have a better chance of prospering in the rapidly changing multipolar competitive landscape. Thanks for sticking around. See you in the next video.